Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made, and I don't know about you, but I choose to rejoice. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good, and his mercies endure forever. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord forever. I am thankful and grateful to be in the house of the Lord just one more time. And as, as, as the senior saints would say, it's good to be seen and not viewed. Amen? Amen. Amen. First and foremost, I want to give honor to God who is truly the head of my life. Uh, to the tribal chief of this branch of Zion in his absence, Dr. Stafford. To First Lady Stafford, his partner in love, life, labor, marriage, ministry, and parenting. And to all of you, the fellowship and fellowship of fellowship. Thank you all for this opportunity to be in your presence once again. Y'all, it's just good to be here. It is good to be here. Before I get started, I want to just call out two people. Uh, one is my good friend, Minister Johnny Robinson. He surprised. I, I sent him a text, and he was able to make it, so I'm glad that he is here to support me. Uh, whenever, we're, whenever we're preaching or not preaching together, we try to show up where the other person is, so I'm glad that he is here. And I also have my sister in the house, y'all. Uh, Julia, you want to wave your hand, please? That's my sister, so I'm glad that she is here. So I won't hold you long. Let's go before God in prayer. Father, we just thank you for this time that you've allowed us to be in this place, in this building. Father, whatever cares that we've had that may hinder us from hearing from you, God, I pray that you remove them right now. Father, allow your spirit to saturate this place. Father God, we pray that you would move me totally out of the way and take over. Do what you do, how you do it, in the manner and the nature in which you do it. Father, we take no credit. We give it all to you. You said that your word would not go out and return voice. So do what it is that you need to do. Touch the hearts and the minds of these earth people. And if by chance someone in the building is not saved, we pray that this day they will say, what can I do? to be saved. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Um, won't be before you long. I want to share uh, today's message will come from Psalms 137. The 137th number of Psalms. Uh, I'm going to read four verses but I only want to focus in on one verse. Amen. Psalms 137. And we're going to begin with the first verse, and I'll be reading in your hearing from the New King James Version. Amen? Amen. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down. Yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. We hung our harps upon the willows in the midst of it. For there, those who carried us away captive asked of us a song. And those who plundered us requested mirth, saying, Sing us one of the songs of Zion's. Verse 4 says, How shall we sing the Lord's song in a foreign land? Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of God. And we want to just kind of hang out on that fourth verse where it says, How shall we sing the Lord's song? in a foreign land. And just for a couple of minutes of your time, I want to tag this particular text this morning, Songs in the Key of Life. All right, now remember y'all, we are in church. Some of y'all already got that, but we're going to talk about songs in the key of life. November of last year, I had the pleasure of being home in Detroit, Michigan. And while there, I, I did something for the first time that I've never done in life before. And that was go off a of Grand Boulevard and visit the Motown Museum. During this tour, uh, we were given in-depth history about Motown. 
Motown started uh, by Barry Gordy, Jr. And his mother and father, his, his father owned a grocery store and his mother owned a print company. And what they decided was, instead of the family going to a bank to get money, they started a family fund. And anybody in the family that wanted to start something or needed the money, instead of going to someone else, they came to the family. Now that's another sermon, but we're not gonna talk about that today. But they went to the family and not outside the family to get the resources that they needed to move forward in life. Barry Gordy went to his parents and asked for eight hundred dollars to start Motown. During the tour, uh, there was a vending machine in the building. And we noticed that in the vending machine, it was filled with baby roof candy bars. And, and it was 10 cents, at that time it was 10 cents. And it was a lot of dimes on top of the vending machine. And a lot of us ask questions, why do you have this old vending machine with dimes on it and nothing but baby roofs? The tour guide says, one particular night, a young man walks into Motown and started doing some demos and laying some track. Barry Gordy was astonished by the musical talents and vocals of this young man. But what happened was the young man wanted a snack while doing his sessions, and he says, look, man, I love baby roofs. Do you have any? And they said no. The guy says, well, I'm going to leave to go get me a Baby Ruth candy bar. And, and Barry Gordy says, you know what? I'll, if that man ever comes back to this building, I'm going to make sure there's a Baby Ruth. And y'all y'all know what? The man came back. Okay? Now, the man I'm talking about, his name is Stephen Morris. Okay? But you and I know him and the world know him as Stevie Wonder, okay? Stevie Wonder in 1976 uh, 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 released a double album. I know some folks don't know what albums is, but there's this circular thing <laughs> that actually have songs on them, uh, and, and they have songs on both sides, okay? And, and the average album on side A has maybe six to eight songs, and all of them are hits. Back then they were. Nowadays, you could buy an a album, a CD, or whatever, and you may get one or two hits all the way through. But, but Stevie Wonder in 76 did a double release album. And the album title was Songs in the Key of Life. And it's from this that I borrowed the scriptures or the, 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 talk, uh, the theme for today, Songs in the Key of Life. And what makes this album so, so, so great a dynamic is that it talked about Stevie Wonder's when he recalls various stages of his life. On this album, it talks about his childhood. It talks about finding love. It talks about losing, losing love. It talks about his faith. It talks about social injustice. Stevie says, for every situation I find myself in life, I have a song. And I encourage you today that no matter where life has you, no matter where you find yourself in life, always have a song. We as a people have a history of allowing songs to get us through. It's the music and the melodies that have seen us through. Uh, uh, can we go back a little bit? Now this is, now, just because I'm from Detroit, I'm not pumping all of my Detroit artists, but Stevie is, is a musical genius to me. Okay, he is phenomenal. Not only is he a singer, but he's a songwriter, composer, all of that. And for my young people, he was doing it before Dre. Okay, y'all know who Dre is. Okay, but watch this on this album. One of my, I, I got a couple of favorites, so y'all might have to go back a little bit. One of them is, I wish. Looking back on me now, was a little now. All right, somebody know. What, what, about, what about Sir Duke? You can feel it all over. You can feel it all over, people. Now, now, I know we're in Dallas, and I'm about to shock some of my younger generation. Tevin Campbell, uh, he has a song that we like, but he's not the originator of the song. 
Something about your love makes me weak and knocks me off. All right. And then the, another song that Stevie has on this album is, Isn't she lovely? Isn't she wonderful? Now that's a song Stevie wrote about his little girl. But here's the deal. We all know Stevie Wonder could not see. He was born blind. So this, these songs are songs that he wrote and composed, not of things that he saw with his physical eye, but things that he saw from a spiritual, things that he sensed. So it's the music and the melodies that have brought us through some of our rough times. It brought us through the underground. It brought us through slavery. It brought us through separate but equal. It brought us through Brown versus the Board of Education. It's the music and the melodies of our times that have seen us through the civil rights movement, the death of, 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 of Emmett Till, the death of Dr. King, Mega Evers, Malcolm X. It is the music and the melodies that has brought us through. It's the music and the melodies that will keep us and carry us as we journey through this thing called life. But when we come to our text today, we find the captives are in exile. And, and, and the oppressor, the enemy, says, sing us some of them songs of Zion. Is that not like the enemy when the enemy thinks he has the upper hand on you? They want to call into question your faith. Yeah. The enemy wants to call and call into question your, 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 your God. Can your God do this? Is your God able? And that's where the captives find themselves. They're in exile. What is exile? Exile is being taken away from a place of familiarity, a place of comfort. But then this text talks about worshiping in exile. That sounds kind of like an oxymoron, kind of like oil and water. How can I worship in exile? How can I worship when I'm someplace I'm not familiar with. How can I worship when I'm someplace I don't want to be and I'm brought here, I'm in this situation, not because of something I did, but because of somebody else. How can I worship? Worship, worship is when we give reverence and adoration to God. Here I am in the place I don't want to be. I'm, I'm here with folks I don't want to be. They're laughing at me, they mock at me, and yet I got to worship. Maybe, maybe it's just me who's been in that situation to where I had more, more month than money and, and, and I got to come to church and lift up holy hands, talk about, Lord, you are good. It may, may, maybe you got that notice from the job saying, we thank you for your service. And here you are in an unfamiliar place and they want you to work. And not only that, they have folks laughing and mocking you. And watch this. Says, sing us some of those, those Jesus songs. Sing us some of those songs of Zion. Now here we are in the midst of the Babylonian captivity. You have the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. And those that believe and worship have been taken from their native land, taken from their place of worship, and now someplace they don't want to be. And they're saying, sing us some of that song. Sing us those songs of Zion. Sing us those Jesus songs. But then look at verse number four. The captives says to one another, how shall we sing Zion's songs or the Lord's songs in a foreign land? Don't ever... And that might not be proper English, proper grammar. But don't ever let the enemy cause you to question the God you serve. Because 
He has shown up time and time again. Uh, uh, I, I was on, 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 on the internet uh, early this week and they were making memes about stuff that had recently happened in history or in, in the nation and, and they make these different memes and under the memes it says the internet still undefeated. But, but watch this, uh, on Friday some of us got hit with the cloud strike and the enemy or the internet got defeated. But can I just pause right here and says God undefeated. I, I'm a huge sports fan, right? And when you have a heavyweight bout, uh, at the end of the bout, if it's not a knockout, the ring announcer says, winner and still undefeated. So can we get that winner and still undefeated? God, Jesus, our Lord and Savior, no matter how many fights he's in, at the end of the fight. Okay, watch this. For those that got your Bible, do me a favor. Go, turn to the book of Revelations. And after you go through all of that, in the book of Revelations, guess what? Winner and still undefeated. Our God. So they asked the question to themselves, how can we sing the Lord's song in a foreign land? Now, I hope and pray there are no English majors here, that there are no English teachers here. And just for this one moment, those that are still in school, we, 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 we finna do some improper English and grammar, okay? Now, mama say, uh, you, 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 it's, it's not correct to answer a question with a question. But, but, but for, for, for these captives, because right now they, they, they're kind of confused, uh, uh, they says, how can we sing the Lord's song in a foreign land? Can I, can I respond with one of two questions? A and y'all can pick whichever question y'all want to use. My first response would be, uh, when they say, how can we sing the Lord's song? My first response would be, why would I not sing the Lord's song in a foreign, company, in a foreign land? The second would, think, would be is, what better place to sing the Lord's song than in a foreign place. But then here's the thing, and it's very important that we take our time in reading scriptures. Uh, when you go back to the scriptures and you see uh, the first, when you get your, if you look at your Bible and your app open, I want to look at verse number one, the latter part of verse number one. Because it says, sing us those songs, and then the captain says, how can we sing the Lord's song? But they say in the latter part of verse one, it says, when we remembered Zion. Before they were even asked about singing Zion songs, before they start to call into question about can they sing the Lord's song in a strange land, they, they, they already answered the question before the question was ever asked. How can we sing the Lord's song in a foreign land? We can sing it because we remember Zion. What, 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 is, what is remembering? Remembering is to call to your remembrance of a previous experience. In order for you to remember something, you have had to have experienced it before. So what they say is, we can sing the Lord's song because we remembered Zion. In order for them to remember Zion, that means at one point in time they had to be in Zion. Which means at one point in time in life, previously they've enjoyed the fellowship. They enjoyed the worship of Zion. So you can sing the song because... You remembered Zion. I only got two points for you, and I'm going to be a dumb chair. The first point is, uh, worship is not limited to a location. Yeah, we, we, we put on our Sunday's best, as we call it, 
And we come to the house of the Lord every Sunday. We come on Wednesdays. We come when we're supposed to. And we think that we worship here and that because of the brick and the mortar, we're worshiping. Worship takes place wherever you are. Watch this. The Bible tells us where two or three are gathered in my name, he says, I'll be in the midst. So I'm three persons, me, myself, and I. So I've already exceeded the number count. So I'm not worried about the numbers as far as in the book of Numbers, I like the numbers that they talk about in Acts when it says, and on the day of Pentecost, we were all together in one place and on one accord. We need to understand that worship is not tied to location. I can be in my car, and every time certain songs come on, it gets a reaction. Okay, one of the songs is, thank you, Lord, tragedies are commonplace. All kinds of diseases, people are slipping away. Economy is down, people can't get enough pay. By the time they get for that part that says, and as for me, all I can say, my hands and my car is right. And I'm in my car by myself, me and the music. I am not in the church. I don't wait. Guess what? On my way to the church, I'm getting my praise and worship on. So we need to get out of this mindset that I can't worship God until I'm in the building. Okay. Well, here's what you have to understand, too. The text says they will buy the rivers of Babylon. So... Sometimes when you find yourself in an unfamiliar place, you have to look around and see what's there. Because when they were worshiping in Zion, part of worship was they would wash one another's feet. What is needed to wash someone's feet? Water. Okay, y'all got to get in there. The text says, by the rivers of Babylon. That's where they put them. Part of their worship experience, their worship ceremonies when they were in Zion was they washed one another's feet. So in order for them to worship, give pure worship, authentic worship, they would wash one another's feet they would have to be by a river or some form or some source of water to wash someone's feet. But the text says the captives took them and placed them by the rivers. They were not in the brick and mortar. They were not in Zion, but yet they still had water to worship because they were by the rivers of Babylon. You have to understand that, that our bodies are made up of water. And as long as you're close to a source of water, water is a sign or symbol of life. So even if you find yourself in an unfamiliar place, an unfamiliar territory, someplace you're not used to being, as long as you find water, that's a symbol that life is not far from where you are. Worship is not limited to a location. Next thing the text teaches us is worship is not based upon our observation. We get so caught up in what we see. And when we see it, we get discouraged. As Christians, the Bible tells us we walk by faith and not by sight. Now, I've, I've often said one of my biggest complaints as a Christian is, is my spiritual eye and my physical eye don't see eye to eye. But, but, but what happened, what I learned is when I go through and read the Bible, when the Lord tells us something, nine times out of ten, 
The odds are stacked against us. But if you move in the direction that God say move, I guarantee you it will all work in your favor. And God never gives us from A to Z. He just says, go and do. Come in, Noah. See that pile of wood over there? Do me a favor. Start putting them pieces of wood together. I want you to do this and do that. Put it like this. And this is what I want you to do. Well, Lord, I'm doing. Noah, just be quiet and do what I ask. Put the wood together. And as Noah is putting the pieces of wood together, folk are laughing. Oh, they're going to know he didn't have one too many to drink today. He, he, there you go. He off the deep end again. He on the bench. But when the rain came, I didn't hear nobody complaining. But they all came running. God never, ever tells us the whole plan because guess what? If he does, then we try to do it our way. God don't need us. All he wants us to do is have the faith to move as he say move. But it says that they were in a strange place and then they sat down. But watch this. They hung their hearts on the willow tree. Don't ever, I know that's probably bad English, don't ever let anybody cause you to put aside your weapon against spiritual warfare. Harp is the instrument that they, as you go through Bible history, it's the harp that they use to keep that connection to God. But then I was, I was very intrigued because in this region of the world, a lot of the trees were palm trees. But I'm like, this text specifically lets us know it's a willow tree. And what I realized is a willow tree, that tall tree that with the leaves just bringing over and all that kind of stuff. And I'm like, well, why, if they're in a strange land, why we ain't got no palm trees? And, and I did some research. Do y'all know that when we look at things through our physical eye, a willow tree brings about grief, brings about mourning, it brings about sadness. But when we look at a willow tree and view it the way God views it, it's about strength, stability, resilience. Have we not gone through life where stuff has knocked us down and we thought we were out for the count? But when we look at it through God lenses, uh, was, it, was it Joseph brother who said what you meant for evil, God meant it for good. Uh, and he'll make your enemies your footstool. The last time I got on a footstool, it got me higher than where I was when I was on level ground. When I got on a footstool, the people that was trying to get me and take me out couldn't. I, I remember, I remember, um, there was a, a pilot, and they were on the runway getting ready to take off. And then the flight attendant from the back, she calls and says, uh, Captain, you need to stop this plane ASAP. He said, well, what's wrong? He says, I looked down, and when I took my seat and put my seatbelt on, I looked down, and I saw a snake by my foot. The pilot says, okay, well, sit back, relax, keep your seatbelt on. And then the pilot begins to jump down the runway and start increasing the speed. And she called, whoa, whoa, pilot, you didn't hear what I said. I said, there's a snake by my foot. And he's starting to circle around my foot. You need to stop what you're doing. And someone needs to come and get this snake. The pilot says, flight attendants, <laughs> prepare for takeoff. The pilot as he's going down the runway, to get the pilot to elevate, you have to pull back on the wheel. And as he's pulling back, the speedometer is showing how fast and how far they're going. And the flight attendant is livid by that time. I'm sure she's talking in another language or another tongue, talking to the pilot. And then when they get to cruising altitude, he calls back to the flight attendant and says, excuse me, do me a favor. He said, what's that? says, can you look down at your feet and tell me what you see? She drops the phone and she says, oh my God. He says, what? She says, the snake is dead. He says, yes. 
when God is trying to take you to higher heights, certain creatures are subterrane. And the higher you go, they can't survive at high altitudes. So he says he'll make your enemies your footstool. So, so, so we should not always look at things through our lenses. And, and then I also notice about the willow tree. You know, most trees, they have that bark and it just goes straight up. But if you ever look at a willow tree, it bark always, it's, it's like two barks that are always intertwined. And I'm like, that don't make no sense. Why this tree got one and this one got two that's intertwined? He says, well, one thing, one thing is because you're never alone when you're going through what you're going through. And he says, you're intertwined because that's a sign of strength and unity. So, so, so whenever you see a willow tree, don't look at it as grief or sorrow. Look at it the way God looks at it, as strength, stability, and resilience. So, so how can we sing the Lord's song in, 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 in a foreign land? Because we remembered Zion. I was watching a, a movie with Ice Cube, I think called The Long Shot. And it's where he took a, a, a bunch of young children to a football championship, right? And one day they were practicing. And during the practice, when they got into the, the kids, when the kids made it across the end zone, they started doing the end zone dance and all that kind of stuff. And Ice Cube said, okay, everybody come here. Walk across, had everybody in the end zone. And he said, everybody start doing your dance. And everybody started doing the end zone dance. Somebody did Thriller and all this other kind of stuff. He says, now here is what I do every time I score. He says, I cross the threshold. I walk over to the ref. I look at the ref. I look him up and down. And he, he says, I hand him the ball. And like, that ain't nothing. Why are you doing that? He says, because I want the ref. I want the enemy. I want the opposition to know I've been here before. So whenever you're going through some things and the enemy is trying to attack you, you ain't got to do your dance and all that kind of stuff. You just look at him because he knows you've been there before. So how can we sing Zion songs? Because we remembered Zion. I'm done, but here's a final thought. Final thought is we were created to worship God. That's our purpose on this verse, on this earth, is to worship God. So I want to just encourage you today, when you find yourself in a foreign land, go back through the pages of the Bible. The Bible says, in Genesis 1 and 1, it says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So if he created the heavens and the earth, if he's the creator, the creator normally owns what they create. Okay? So if, if God created the heavens and the earth, no place we should go should be foreign. Okay? I understand the Bible says that we are a peculiar people, but right, we are to be in the world, but not of the world. So we see that he created the heavens and the earth, right? Psalms 24 and 1, I believe it says, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. So if they're in the world, it all belongs to God. And so there's no place, and watch this, God is what we call omnipresent. That means he's everywhere at the same time. So you are never alone. You are never without the Lord. So you can sing the Lord's songs wherever you go. How, how, what, 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 if I can sing the Lord's song, encourage me today that when I find myself in any type of situation, how can I see myself through this situation? I told you earlier, it's the music and the melodies. You want a song to encourage yourself through a rough time? Now, y'all, I'm about to go old school, so you young folks, y'all might not get with me on this one. That's okay. When you find yourself going through some things and you don't know 
uh, uh, how the life is going to turn out, just say, I will trust in the Lord. I, watch this. It says, I will trust in the Lord. And I'm going to trust in him until I die. But then it don't stop there. There's some prerequisites. It says, I'm going to treat everybody right. Whether they treat me right or not, I'm going to treat everybody right. Another song I like to, to, like to sing is, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory. Dear. Then it says, I'm an heir. I'm an heir. It's waiting for me. Here's the thing. Did not Christ already die on the cross for my sins? So I am an heir. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. When I've done wrong and I fell off a little bit, and I don't feel like I'm worthy of being called his child, what can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Y'all, I'm out of here with this because I don't want to tear up the house and Dr. Staff don't invite me back no more. But when you find yourself out here all alone and you don't, like, well, I'm out here now and I'm by myself. Look, what am I going to do? Just sing what mom and me used to sing. We've come this far by faith. Watch this. Leaning on the Lord, trusting in his holy word, he's never failed me yet. And we sing it what? Oh. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Pastor Haynes. You always bless our heart. And I just want us to just echo one thing. How can we sing in a foreign land? And he tells us we can sing in a foreign land because we can remember. Amen. We can remember that God said he would never leave us or forsake us. We can remember that he is bread when we are hungry. We can remember that he is water when we're thirsty. We can remember that he can do all things but fail. We have to reflect on what God has already done. Amen. He is faithful. 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 And he is a good God. Amen. We need to remember that we have songs imparted in our heart that will take us from one journey to another. Amen. And how do we know that? We know that because there was a man that was sent down from heaven. Amen. To die for you and me. And we remember a song, amen, as we're talking about songs. And it talks about amazing grace, amen. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like you and me. And if you want to know about this Jesus that he's preaching about on today or that we're worshiping about today, today is no better day than for you to search your heart and mind and come to him, amen. This is an opportunity where we allow you to make a decision for the rest of your life. And then you will have your own song, amen? Songs of the key of life. You will have your own story. You will have your own testimony. But more importantly, you will have your own salvation and an eternal resting place with him. Because tomorrow's not promised. And we're all leaving here, amen? We're one day closer to being with him if you accept him. So on today, we extend Christ to you. We extend the answer. 
we extend the true song. And as David went through everything that David went through as we've been listening to the Psalms over the summer, David was in a lot of places. David did a lot of things. But David was still a man after God's own heart. No good thing will he walk up withhold from those that walk upright. And we always have an opportunity to get it right so we can walk upright in him. So I encourage you. I plead with you to join this band of believers and come on board this Christian journey, amen, and allow Jesus to lead, guide, and protect you as you continue in your faith, amen? Amen. We thank you on today, Pastor. We thank you for always coming and doing what God has called you to do. An end time word, an end time season, for an end time people in an end time journey, amen? And we thank you, amen, amen. And if you are looking for a church home, or you have your relationship intact, but you're trying to find that place where you can work and serve and grow, we are that place, amen? Fellowship Christian Center Church, 1609 14th Street, Plano, Texas, amen? love for you to join us today. We'd love for you to be a part of this family. Deacon Scott would be your deacon, amen. He and his wife, Cynthia Scott, they will love on you along with all of the members of this church, along with our pastor and first lady. So if you're looking for a church home, we'd love to have you. You can join now. You can join at the Connect. There's a card on the back of your chair. Or you can call us midweek. You can call us towards the end of the week. We are available to you, amen, to help you in your journey. You are not alone, as Pastor told us. You are not alone. God is with you, and he has allowed people to be in relationship with you as well. So that's an opportunity. Thank you, Dee. Thank you for standing. We do want to acknowledge our visitors on today. We also want you all to know that our pastor is on his refresh, revive, rekindle, rejuvenate, amen. Continue to pray for him and his wife as they are vacationing and resting and relaxing and allowing God to replenish them, amen. So pray for them as they're traveling, amen. Pray for each other. Continue to remember all of the announcements that were given this week. And we will allow God to lead us, amen. Amen. And again, to this great man of God that always blesses us, we thank you for coming. You know that you are family. We want you to send a shout out and a hug to your ride or die Malachi that's not with you today. Amen. Let him know we missed him. And again, thank you for coming. Thank you for always bringing visitors. And just thank you for being a friend to our pastor. That in his time of a way that he can count on you to step in and give us a word. Amen. Amen. You be blessed, Pastor. Amen. All right. Now, we would always stand so our visitors don't feel alienated. Amen. We want them to know that we love them. We have Brianna Orange and Brian Orange from Plano, Texas. They are visiting. One is visiting. They're twins. Well, they're my cousins. One visiting is visiting because of me. The other one is visiting because of Marcus Coblin. Look at me, how he's looking at me. The grandson of Candy Coblin. He's on his grind. Amen. Amen. Thank you for inviting. We also have Reverend Johnny Robinson, who is also uh, visiting with us from Forney. He is a guest of the of the preacher here for the hour. Thank you for coming, Alma Navarez. Alma, thank you visiting. She's visiting from Dallas. She lives in Dallas and she heard about us on the radio. Amen. So if our pastor was here, he would tell you that he is your special guest because he does the radio announcement. Amen. So please come back so that you can meet him as well. And Julia Haynes. Amen. Also, we know she's from Irving and she is the sister of our guest preacher. Thank you again for visiting. Thank you for supporting your brother. Amen. 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 
All right, guys, so we can govern ourselves accordingly. Thank you all again in virtual space for worshiping with us today. Thank all of you that came in person. Again, we love you. God bless you. We thank you for your servanthood. We thank you for your commitment to Christ. We thank those that went out with us yesterday, passing out cards and evangelizing to the community. And we thank you in advance for those that are going to church under the tree. Amen. It takes us, amen, to do what God has called us to do, amen, a collective body, amen, and we thank you for all that you do for the kingdom. Bless our pastor in his absence and all of those that have entered the doors on today, amen, amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you on this day thanking you, Lord, for the word that went forth, thanking you for this powerful man of God. We ask that you keep him, that you bless him, that you direct him.